of evolution by natural selection is a controversial theory that is included in this textbook. It is controversial because it states that natural selection provides the basis for the modern scientific explanation for the diversity of living things. It is assumed that it produces large changes, even though this has not been directly observed. What's the problem with that? Well, it points out to students and it makes them think, hmm, maybe I shouldn't be learning this. Maybe I should see this as not being you know, good for me, or maybe this isn't legitimate. Whereas most of the world has no issue with the concept of scientific evolution, in the southeastern United States, the conflict is a very real thing. Lends such a unique cultural underpinning that studies done in other parts of the country don't necessarily apply. My name is Dr. Amanda Glaze, and I am a wife, mother, scientist, um, teacher, pot stirrer. <laughs> I researched the evolution conflict in the southeastern United States. I was uh, born and reared Southern Baptist, very devout <laughs> family. Started out in applied sciences and some really interesting lab conversations kind of got me interested in understanding some of the conflict between why so many of us have no problem at all with evolution and yet it was something I couldn't even come home and talk to people about. Well, we're in the Bible Belt, okay? We're in the heart of the Bible Belt. This is yes. what we know, what we've been taught. It's been taught or not taught for generations or not talked about, it's been taboo. They tolerate me. <laughs> They love me and they tolerate what I do. Maybe you just make sure God is proud of what you're writing. You know, make sure God, you know, is in agreement with you because it's important. I prayed for her a lot. Yeah. Just because of the topic. It's just, in, it's just ingrained and she can't help it. She was terrified. She's to this day terrified because evolution is in complete contradiction with the literal interpretation of Genesis, which says that God created man in his own image. And, you know, we were taught that to believe otherwise was basically to throw out the entire Bible. People hear the word evolution and they just turn off. They think they know what evolution is. They have the idea that evolution is about people coming from monkeys. I have had students tell me that because dinosaurs are not in the Bible, they don't exist, that, that they are a hoax planted by scientists to throw us off. Everyone's kind of got their minds made up on what they believe, and no amount of talking to them really is gonna change it unless you can sit down and really detail things out. As scientists, if we really want to change the, the general public's opinion about a topic such as evolution. We have to focus on our teaching and our approach and how we deal with them. That is really the place where the rubber meets the road, so to speak, because these are people that are gonna impact thousands of students when we get out there. A lot of times we see things like a teacher coming into a classroom and telling students, I'm not comfortable with this. This does not agree with what I believe in. And they might teach it for a day or two but it sends conflicting messages, much like having disclaimers in textbooks. I was one of those teachers that hoped that we didn't get to evolution because I didn't want to step on toes. That some kid's going to run home and say, they're telling me I came from a monkey, you know, and that's not what we're telling them. There was already research done that said teachers who accept evolution are more likely to teach it. Those who reject evolution are more likely not to teach it. So, okay, well, what factors impact acceptance and rejection? Easy. It started out as a simple quantitative study. She told me that she was doing her doctoral thesis on teaching evolution in public schools, and she was surveying several different teachers that she knew. To make any scientific determinations about historic occurrences in nature, there must be direct human observation. The theory of evolution is incapable of being scientifically tested um, I remember feeling undecided on some of them. You would think that the more people in someone's life 
who were in science, technology, engineering, and math, you would expect them to have a positive impact on a person's acceptance of evolution, and that didn't happen. We expected that the more someone understood the concepts of evolution, that it would have a bigger impact on their acceptance of evolution. That didn't happen. Their religious background explains a lot. 14% unique impact. We only got a moderate acceptance level, and these are biology majors and future teachers. We're well behind the world when it comes to a lot of these scientific concepts, and a lot of that has to do with this perceived conflict between religiosity and science, that you have to be either religious or scientific, and it's, it's really a false dichotomy. I know what we have taught our children. I know what my children believe as far as Jesus. And if they want to add some scientific theory to that, as long as it does not contradict our religious beliefs, then I can accept that. I think I have to defer to scripture that says if you teach a child the way that it should go, it will not depart from it. Evolution to me is adaptation in humans and animals and not on the scale of let's say monkeys to humans more on the scale of um, fish flying you know he talks about dr. glaze a lot at home which is different for him to talk about teachers instead of coaches I mean I believe as soon as I walked in that dr. glaze respected my beliefs and if, if a, a Muslim or somebody else or an atheist walked in there she'd respect that too there's no doubt about it you're free to believe what you want to believe. Here's the science. Let's look at it, okay? Let's talk this through. Let's look at what's going on here. The ability to take off that belief hat and set it aside for a minute and weigh the evidence without it, it's opening the door to them being okay with sidelining those beliefs later. That's a journey that's very hard, especially people coming from a literalist, fundamentalist position. I know because I've, I've made that journey myself. We're never going to get any better as a people, as a state, as a country, as a world, if we're not open to change. You can't make everyone accept evolution. That's true. But if you look at things from a perspective of, you know, a lot of those people were in the very high, high acceptance. There were a good deal in the low, very low levels but a majority of those people fall in the middle when you look at the bell curve. So they could fall in either direction. That's the target. As a teacher, I am hopeful that her research will help us present the material in a non-confrontational manner that students can look at and evaluate for themselves. You know, this is not a war of evolution versus religion. This is, to me, this is a war for science literacy. And you know what, it, if it costs me my job somewhere, it costs me my job somewhere, but I'm still gonna teach evolution.